Is stress making us fat? Let's talk about it, but first, we need to understand what stress is and what's happening in the body and mind. Welcome to the series, I'm Alicia and I'm so glad you're here. Before we get started, I wanna remind you to subscribe and hit the bell. Remember, this course is hosted via email, so to get all the additional downloads and materials, you've gotta sign up. It is free at mindofremunch.com slash foodfreedom. Only the videos are on YouTube, the rest is there. So today we are talking stress. Stress is one area that's really opening Western medicine up to the idea that the body and mind are connected. Remember, we talked about the mind-body connection in a video last week, I think it was last week or the week before, but make sure you've watched those before this one. Now, stress is a mental and emotional state. We can feel stressed, but it's also a physiological state. Something is happening physically in the body. And most of you are probably familiar with, you know, stress hormones. Uh, we know hormones aren't just mental, right? They're chemical messengers in the body and brain. And they're one of the main ways that we know the brain and body are connected. So what is stress? So stress is defined as pressure or tension, and it can be physical or emotional. One of the first guys to really study stress was Dr. Hans Selye, and he actually actually defined stress as a response. So the event that produces the stress is a stressor. So the stressor produces it, we respond with the stress. The stress is a reaction, a response to what's happening. His theory on stress was that failed attempts at trying to adapt to stressful situations, stressful conditions, leads to dis-ease, right? Dis-ease, disease. So this is general adaptation syndrome is what he called it. And I talk about this a little bit more in the email materials today. So his work is what led us to the field of psychoneuroimmunology. Psychoneuroimmunology. Which is pretty much a budding field today. It studies the effect of the mind on health and resistance to disease. And most often as it relates to stress on the immune function. If you remember last week when we talked about dysregulation in systems theory, the idea that the body is a system System, and it's capable of regulating on its own, self-regulating. But if the feedback loops, remember, if the feedback loops become interrupted, they can't regulate properly and it becomes dysregulated. Now in this way, stress is a form of dysregulation. Stress is a normal part of life. We can't avoid it, but we need to learn to manage it. And if we don't manage it, then the feedback loops can't work properly and we actually create a stress reaction cycle. So let's talk about what actually happens in the body when we get stressed. Stress can be chronic or it can be acute. So chronic stressors are stressors that happen over extended periods of time, like taking care of a family member with a chronic disease. Um, you know, it goes on for many, many years. It could be a chronic medical condition that you have yourself or something like that. Acute stressors come and go in really short periods of time. So it could be something yearly like tax deadlines. It could be small daily stressors like running around in the morning, rushing to get ready, driving in traffic, being late to work. Now, all of these acute stressors, they add up over time and they can become chronic. The biggest way that these acute stressors become chronic is that we ruminate, we have thoughts, we have worries about these stressors in our mind and the stress that comes from that rumination actually leads to hypertension, to increased blood pressure. So we have a thought and it increases our blood pressure. You see body-mind connection. Okay, so how does that happen? I'm gonna get a little bit sciencey here to explain it, but don't worry if you don't understand every single thing. If you do, great. Some of you probably understand it better than me, but if you don't, don't stress. No stress, okay. So something happens that stresses us out. It can be an actual external stressor. So maybe that's like a tiger. There's a tiger there, it stresses me out. Or, you know, something small, like a plate shatters on the ground, or you're in traffic, or it could be an internal stressor. So it's inside of us, like a thought or feeling, uh, I'm gonna be late and I'm stressed out about it. So-and-so is going to die. I'm stressed out about it, a feeling of anxiety. This all gets processed 
in our brains. And this creates an alarm reaction. An alarm reaction is your body's way of getting ready to be defensive or aggressive. So when there were tigers chasing us, maybe there weren't, I don't know, but you know, back in like caveman days, this was really helpful as a form of protection. But when it's a trap, you know, when we're stuck in traffic or when we're having a thought, it's not that helpful. And in fact, it's harmful because it causes stress. So what happens is we experience the fight or flight response. So we experience the fight or flight response, FFF, which is actually fight, flight, or freeze. But when we feel threatened, whether it's a physical threat like a tiger or an abstract one in our mind, the ANS, the autonomic nervous system gets involved. Now, when it gets involved, we experience symptoms of stress and distress, like um, muscle tension, strong emotions, like terror or fright, anxiety, shame, maybe anger, and the brain and nervous system start firing stress hormones. Our sense perceptions all become heightened. You know, if there's a tiger, you need to take in as much information as possible. So your pupils dilate to let in light and your hearing becomes acute. Your body hair stands up. We become really alert. Our blood pressure increases, our heart rate goes up, and that's all to get our blood flowing to our big muscles in case we have to run. The digestive system shuts down because, you know, you don't really need to be digesting anything if you're running from a tiger. This all happens because the autonomic nervous system is activated. The autonomic nervous system regulates those internal states of the body like heart rate and blood pressure and digestion, things that you don't have to think about doing. You don't have to think about your heart beating or you don't have to think about breathing, it does it on its own. So there are two branches of the ANS and that's the SNS and the PNS. So the SNS is the sympathetic nervous system and it is responsible for the fight or flight response. There's a lot of arousal and stimulation in the body. It's like you're pressing the gas pedal, the accelerator, okay? The PNS is the parasympathetic nervous system and its function is to help you calm down, slow down. It's like pressing the brake. The PNS is especially involved with how we deal with stress because of its connection to the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is responsible for regulation of internal organ functions that we just mentioned, like digestion and heart rate and uh, you know respiratory rate, and also reflexes like coughing and sneezing, the things you don't have to think about. The vagus nerve also connects the gut and the brain. So when we get activated and we need to calm down, we need higher vagal tone. Now what increases activation in the vagus nerve? Breathing, right? So this is why just bring awareness to your breath when you're really stressed out mentally or emotionally can calm us down physically. This could not happen if the mind and body were not connected. This whole process is really integrated. The mind and body are connected and it's a system where all parts can bi-directionally affect each other. And so if we only try to address the physical aspects of stress, then you know we're stuck in the body and ignoring a huge part, the mental and emotional part that matters for our physical health. Remember that triangle, that triangle of health where we have you know, the physical body and we have uh, the, the mental health and we have the emotional health. So all three of these work together. We need to focus on all of them. Now, you know what else causes stress? So stress is like resistance to what's happening. Essentially, it's a reaction to something uncomfortable. We don't want it. So what happens when we're uncomfortable? Judgment. Judgment is resistance. And when judgment is there, when we judge others or we judge ourselves, we're filled with resistance and adding to our stress. Now, mindfulness is non-judgmental awareness of the present moment. You've heard that meditation leads to less stress and less anxiety. Why? It's not because you're sitting there, right? It's not because there's no magic happening. There are a lot of factors, but when we meditate, really we're practicing being non-judgmental. We're rewriting the habit loop so that we become less judgmental, less reactive, and we train ourselves to be more okay with what's happening. When we meditate, the mind wanders away. You know, do you just notice, do you take the tone? You're so stupid, you're such a bad meditator, you know? or can you kindly bring it back? Can you practice self-compassion? In this way, meditation is a, is a way to practice self-compassion. See, how do you talk to yourself? You know, subtly, it starts to shift the tone. So self-compassion 
isn't, you know, weak or flimsy. It's not giving yourself a pass to just, you know, do whatever or to submit. Um, but it's really just not judging yourself. I said earlier in the series that self-compassion is the antidote to judgment. So just being neutral, kind, seeing clearly, this is really hard, but that's what it is. It's not adding a story to what's happening. So let's get to the real meat of the video. The title is stress making us fat. Now we know that increased cortisol, which is a stress hormone, with increased cortisol, our cells can become resistant to insulin. So we increase our blood sugar and this can lead to weight gain. Increased cortisol also affects our sleep and not enough sleep can lead to weight gain or it can make it really hard to lose weight. Now, back in the tiger days, when we didn't know when we were gonna get our next meal, we retained fat as a safety mechanism. This was regulated by what food was available, you know, and that's seasonally, it's based on our energy expenditure. And so people didn't really gain weight despite these fluctuations. But when we become repeatedly, chronically stressed, our bodies wanna hold on to fat for safety. Now this is another knock against dieting and why it can lead to dysregulation, which we've talked about all series long. With me personally, I tried to lose weight for a long time. I ate every diet, I did a ton of exercise, I struggled with exercise addiction, and it didn't work. I mean, I was exercising four or five hours a day. Why? I really believe now it was stress. It was not until I came to mindfulness that I started to, you know, change my tone with myself, manage my stress in my life, in with work and my relationships. I started to make time for myself and I stopped worrying so much about food. I stopped stressing my body out by over exercising. And then after I started to manage my stress, my body calms down and it was like, oh, you don't need this weight anymore. And it just sort of let it go on its own without counting calories without focusing so much. I really believe it was the stress. So think of how much stress you feel about food and health right now. You know, this isn't helping reach your goal. So remember the root cause, we get caught up in the symptom, but we wanna start at the root. If you struggle with stress, meditation can help you get to the root cause of stress, not getting caught up in the symptom. So I included a guided audio meditation if you wanna try it out, even just five minutes a day. And if you struggle with judging yourself, meditation can help lighten up on those judgments by you know, sending well wishes to yourself and others, just being kind, being neutral. So a lot of information to take in today. I expand on the science a little bit in the materials with the course email for a deeper dive if you want it, but don't be overwhelmed if it doesn't resonate. The main takeaway is stress is mental and physical, and stress makes it very hard, if not impossible, to lose weight or to find peace with health. I mean, peace can't exist really if we're stressed out. Okay, so share in the comments, how do you manage your stress? What makes it so hard to do? And if you know someone who's struggling with a lot of stress, if you could share this video with them or any video in the series that you think would help, I really appreciate it. And remember, at the end of the day, it really is a matter of mind over munch.